Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start with infections of the central nervous system. Now infection may damage nervous system directly or indirectly through microbial toxins or it can also damage as a result of immune mediated mechanisms. So organisms or microbes can enter nervous system by hematogenous route direct implantation that can occur uh, during a trauma. There can be local extension of infection from air sinuses, teeth, skull or vertebrae or the uh, organisms can also be transported via peripheral nervous system like cer certain viral infections, rabies or herpes zoster. Uh, they can travel via peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. Now, coming to acute meningitis, what is acute meningitis? Meningitis simply means an inflammatory process of the leptomeninges and cerebrospinal fluid within the subarachnoid space. So, if there is associated inflammation of the brain parenchyma also along with meninges, then the term used is meningoencephalitis. Then causes are usually infections. Uh, there can be non-bacterial irritant in, introduced into the subarachnoid space and this type of meningitis is called chemical meningitis. Then inf infectious meningitis is classified into acute or Chronic meningitis and acute meningitis is further classified into acute pyogenic which is caused by bacterial infection that produce pus and it can be acute aseptic meningitis and this is usually uh, in 80% of cases it is viral meningitis and in other 20% cases it can be due to bacterial infections as well. But why is it called aseptic? Because no organism is found uh, when you diagnose in the take the CSF or you do blood cultures. No organism is uh, there, so it is called acute aseptic meningitis. So meningitis means inflammation of leptomeninges and cerebrospinal fluid in the subarachnoid space, and meningoencephalitis means uh, inflammation of brain parenchyma as well along with inflammation of the meninges and co uh, causes can be infections or there can be chemical meningitis as well. So uh, uh, classification of meningitis it is classified into acute or chronic and acute is further subclassified into acute pyogenic and acute aseptic and in chronic meningitis this is uh, due to infections by mycobacterium tuberculosis or spirochetes or cryptococcal infections. Now, common organisms causing CNS infections, uh, bacteria, certain bacteria, they cause infection in different ages. Like in neonates, mostly uh, meningitis is called by E. coli or beta hemolytic streptococcus group B. Then in infants, the most common uh, causative organism is Haemophilus influenzae. In adults, the most common causative organism is Neisseria meningitides and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then in old age, uh, CNS infections are most likely to be caused by streptococcus pneumoniae or Listeria monocytogenes. Then viruses which can cause uh, infections in the brain are enterovirus, mumps, herpes, herpes type 1 or 2, then adenoviruses and fungal infections can also cause uh, meningitis. These are cryptococcus, neoformis and in immunocompromised candida or aspergillus or mucor can also cause uh, meningitis. Uh, whereas in case of epidemics, uh, histoplasma or uh, other uh, fungal infections can also cause meningitis. Now, acute biogenic meningitis. 
patient can present with headache photophobia irritability clouding of consciousness and neck stiffness and uh, on morphology when you take the uh, csf csf will be cloudy or frankly purulent and it will be under high pressure and the brain will show exudate it can be at the basal side or it, this exudate may cover the cerebral convexities uh, found in the leptomeninges over the surface of brain and the meningeal vessels are engorged this exudate may be present basally in uh, due to infections by certain organisms or it can be present on the uh, convexities of the brain so this uh, infection can also then extend to the ventricles causing ventriculitis or venous thrombosis and infarction so complications can be uh, adhe uh, chronic adhesive arachnoiditis or uh, this particularly occurs in pneumococcal meningitis and microscopically when you see this you will see uh, neutrophils obviously the pus contains neutrophil and necrotic tissue and if there is necrosis of the brain then uh, necrosis will also be seen so uh, microscopic examination we have discussed it uh, just go through it then uh, neutrophils fill the subarachnoid space and are found predominantly around the leptomeningeal blood vessels and when we do the gram stain this will uh, reveal the causative organism that is either the organisms are gram positive or negative they will be seen on gram staining of the smears then there can be phlebitis which can lead to venous thrombosis and hemorrhagic infarction of the underlying brain and uh, then uh, leptomeningeal fibrosis may follow pyogenic meningitis and it can cause hydrocephalus you know the csf base the cerebral uh, convexities uh, and hydrocephalus can occur whenever there is impaired flow of uh, cerebrospinal fluid due to adhesions so in untreated meningitis there can be ad subarachnoid adhesions and this can lead to uh, increase in the cerebrospinal fluid called hydrocephalus in pneumococcal meningitis large quantities of capsular polysaccharide of the organism produce a particularly gelatinous exudate that causes arachnoid fibrosis called chronic adhesive arachnoiditis so we have done acute uh, pyogenic meningitis now we come to acute aseptic or viral meningitis uh, in uh, this is called aseptic why because the organisms cannot be identified so patients present with features of meningeal irritation there is they can have fever altered consciousness or uh, there can be neck stiffness or neck rigidity and the disease is generally of uh, rarely or uh, generally it is of viral origin and rarely bacterial or uh, other causes like immunologically mediated injury can also cause acute aseptic meningitis so the most common cause of acute aseptic meningitis is viral infection and rarely other bacterial infections can also cause it then uh, csf findings show a uh, lymphocytic pleocytosis when we do lumbar puncture uh, and uh, make a smear of it for cytology on and do the hne staining hematoxyl and eosin staining uh, this csf will show increased lymphocytes whereas we saw neutrophils in case of acute pyogenic meningitis whereas in this acute aseptic lymphocyte count is increased 
and the protein elevation is moderate and the glucose content is nearly all, always normal. So, uh, in acute pyogenic meningitis, the protein elevation was marked and in this acute aseptic, this is moderate. Uh, moderately increased proteins are moderately increased in the cerebrospinal fluid and the glu glucose content is nearly always normal but in case of acute pyogenic meningitis the glucose is markedly reduced or uh, there is no glucose in the cerebrospinal fluid so this is the difference between acute pyogenic and acute uh, aseptic viral meningitis that is uh, the cells in the CSF uh, in the acute uh, pyogenic meningitis they will be neutrophils whereas in aseptic uh, meningitis they will be lymphocytes and the protein content in acute pyogenic meningitis will be markedly increased whereas in case of acute aseptic uh, this is moderately increased and the glucose content in acute pyogenic meningitis will be uh, markedly reduced uh, or it may not be there glucose may be absent in the CSF whereas in case of acute aseptic meningitis glucose is nearly always normal or slightly reduced so this aseptic meningitis is usually self-limiting and is treated symptomatically Now we come to chronic bacterial meningoencephalitis. Chronic bacterial infections of the meninges and brain may be caused by uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Treponema pallidum, and Borrelia species. So tuberculosis is the most common cause of chronic meningitis and it may be a part of systemic disease or may be isolated disease. It may involve the meninges or it may also affect the brain parenchyma. Both may be affected or only the meninges may be affected. So macroscopic examination, the subarachnoid sub space contains a gelatinous or fibrinous exudate most often at the base of the brain obliterating the systems and encasing cranial nerves there may be discrete white granules scattered over the leptomeninges so grossly in case of tuberculosis subarachnoid space will contain gelatinous fibrinous exudate uh, which is uh, seen most often at the base of the brain and it encases the cranial nerves and there may be white granules scattered over the leptomeninges and microscopically uh, you will see a mixed inflammatory cell infiltrate comprising of lymphocytes, plasma cells, macrophages and there may be well-formed granulomas with caseous necrosis and Langhan type of giant cells. So what is the granuloma? It's, a, um, it, it's simply accumulation. There is accumulation of epithelioid cells which may fuse to form Langhan giant cells and there may be caseous necrosis in case of tuberculosis. So in TB there can also be obliterative and arthritis and organisms can often be seen with acid fast stain. What is the acid fast stain? This is Zeal Nielsen stain. So mycobacterium tuberculosis can be found out on this staining with Zeal Nielsen stain. So, grossly what will you see in case of tuberculosis? Grossly there can be fibrinous exudate in the subarachnoid space. There may be, this exudate may encase the cranial nerves as well. And there may be white granules on the surface of leptomeninges. And microscopically there will be mononuclear cell infiltrate and granulomas. Other than this there can be obliterative and arthritis. And mycobacterium tuberculosis can be identified by staining with ZN stain. Another important thing about tuberculosis is that uh, there can be a tuberculoma formation. Uh, one or more well circumscribed intraparenchymal masses may form which may be up to several centimeters in diameter 
they simply have central caseous necrosis which is surrounded by granulomas and there may be calcification as well so these tuberculomas they uh, just appear as space occupying lesion on ct scan and it is difficult to distinguish from uh, them from brain tumors unless biopsy is done then complications can be fibrous adhesive arachnoiditis and uh, you know when th there are adhesions in the subarachnoid space the flow of csf will be deranged leading to hydrocephalus what is hydrocephalus this is increased in the cerebrospinal fluid due to either due to the, uh, the there is derangement in the flow or there is increased production of csf then a single or multiple well circumscribed interparenchymal mass that is tuberculoma may develop tuberculoma may be large up to several centimeters causing significant mass effect and there can be calcification also in inactive lesions then clinical features patients with tuberculous meningitis usually have symptoms of headache malaise mental confusion vomiting there can be neck stiffness csf will show pleocytosis uh, when you take the csf by lumbar puncture it will and make a smear and stain it with hematoxin and eosin stain it will show increased number of mononuclear cells or the there may be a mixture of polymorphs as well along with mononuclear cells and the protein concentration is markedly elevated just like you see in acute pyogenic meningitis protein content is also increased but the cells in tuberculosis are mononuclear cells mostly or there may be a mixture of polymorphs as well and the glucose content typically is moderately reduced or normal complications we have done there can be arachnoid fibrosis causing hydrocephalus obliterative and arthritis and when there is occlusion of the uh, arterial lumen this can lead to infarction of the brain nerve roots may also be damaged and with tuberculomas the symptoms may be typical of space occupying lesion Now, different viral infections can also cause meningitis or if they are uh, invading the brain parenchyma as well then this condition is called meningoencephalitis viral encephalitis is a parenchymal infection of the brain almost invariably associated with meningeal inflammation that is meningoencephalitis sometimes there is simultaneous involvement of the spinal cord also and this is called encephalomyelitis so arthropod borne viral encephalitis there is perivascular cuff of lymphocyte that is, these are the vessels and they are surrounded by lymphocytes then there can be necrosis of the brain tissue and these are then surrounded by glial cells so this is called microglial nodules then in herpes simplex virus type 1 infection herpes encephalitis can occur uh, in immunocompromised or in, in neonates and this shows extensive destruction of the inferior frontal and anterior temporal lobe you can see this is extensive destruction of the inferior frontal and anterior temporal lobes and there is this microscopic picture is showing necrosis and inflammatory cells you can see there is necrosis and infiltration with mostly neutrophils or lymphocytes then herpes simplex virus type 2 can cause acute hemorrhagic necrotizing encephalitis then varicella zoster virus can also cause meningitis or encephalitis and this cns involvement is very rare in in it uh, but if it causes then it can cause granulomatous arthritis 
when cytomegalovirus the infection of the central nervous system occurs in fetuses and immunosuppressed individuals uh, morphology subacute encephalitis and prominent cytomegalic cells with intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusions can be readily identified by conventional light microscopy. So, cytomegalovirus occur, infection occurs in immunocompromised people. And the particular thing that often comes in your MCQ also is that cytomegalic cells. What are cytomegalic cells? They are large cells with intranuclear or intracytoplasmic inclusions. Then poliomyelitis, the incidence of polio is markedly reduced because of uh, proper immunization. Uh, and this virus can cause asymptomatic or symptomatic gastroenteritis. And rarely the virus can cause central nervous system infection, uh, causing meningeal irritation and CSA picture of aseptic meningitis the disease may progress no further or advance to involve the spinal cord also and in spinal cord it affects the anterior horn cells then rabies this is due to the bite by dog uh, a rabid dog when bites then this infection virus can transmit along the peripheral nerves and reach the central nervous system and the brain will show oedema and vascular congestion and microscopically there is wide neuronal degeneration and inflammatory reaction you can see these are blue uh, are inflammatory cells and these are nigri bodies these are large cells they are pathognomonic of uh, rabies and there are cytoplasmic round to oval eosinophilic inclusions these are nigri bodies which are pathognomonic of rabies now coming to brain abscess brain abscess is a localized focal uh, focus of necrosis of brain tissue with accompanying inflammation and it is usually caused by bacterial infection. Brain abscess may arise by direct implantation of organisms or there can be local extension from adjacent foci. What are the local structures? These are mastoiditis. There can be mastoiditis or sinusitis. So uh, organisms can come from there or there can be hematogenous spread, for example, uh, if there is subacute bacterial endocarditis or infection in the lung like bronchitis or uh, patient has history of tooth extraction, then organisms can reach brain uh, via these roots. And the most common organisms that are isolated are streptococci and staphylococci. So morphologically, you can see these are the abscesses in the frontal lobe. Uh, there is liquefactive necrosis and this is surrounded by fibrosis and the surrounding brain shows edema. These are the two abscesses and when you see it under the microscope, it will show liquefactive necrosis in the center and there will be, uh, this will be surrounded by granulation tissue and this granulation tissue, is the vessels are leaky. So, the fluid will leak out from the vessels and uh, it will cause oedema of the surrounding brain. And there can also be a collagenous capsule around it, uh, which is formed by the fibroblasts which migrate from blood vessels. And uh, surrounding this, there can be reactive gliosis. That is, there, there are glial cells in the brain. Uh, they will proliferate and the cells which you see in a, a gliosis will be gemistocytic astrocytes so central liquefactive necrosis surrounded by um, granulation tissue fibrous capsule then brain edema and this will be surrounded by reactive gliosis so organisms can uh, be directly implanted into the brain or they can come from the surrounding structures like mastoiditis sinusitis 
or they can reach uh, uh, via the hematogenous route if there is infection anywhere uh, other in the body like uh, uh, bronchitis or a patient has pneumonia or any other infection like bacterial endocarditis then organisms can reach the brain by, via blood and cause brain abscess. Now, clinical features, patients present clinically with progressive focal deficits in addition to general signs of raised intracranial pressure. You know, raised intracranial pressure, it can also lead to herniation as well. So, uh, what is herniation? Simply displacement of the brain along the Fox cerebri or tentorium cerebri or uh, along the openings in the brain that is foramen magnum. Then uh, CSF will show increased pressure. The white cell count is raised. Protein concentration is increased. The glucose content is normal. And the increased intracranial pressure and progressive herniation can be fatal. Abscess rupture can lead to ventriculitis, meningitis, and venous sinus thrombosis. With surgery and antibiotics, the otherwise high mortality rate can be reduced to less than 10%. Now we come to the lab diagnosis of meningitis. We collect the CSF by doing dumbbell puncture. And we do the physical examination of the CSA. We just look at its color and its pressure. Then cytological examination is done by making a smear and staining it with hematoxylin and eosin stain. And we look at the type of cells present in it. That is uh, whether the cells are uh, lymphocytes or neutrophils and they are increased in number. Then biochemical examination we see protein and sugar content of the cerebrospinal fluid and then bacteriological examination will show uh, the type of bacteria we will do gram staining and zn staining that will show uh, whether the bacteria is gram positive negative or uh, it is acid fast bacillus that is mycobacterium tuberculosis now, 5 to 10 milliliter of CSF is collected by doing lumbar puncture and physical examination in pyogenic meningitis. CSF is under pressure. Its pressure is increased and it is turbid. Normal color of the CSF is it is clear colored. Uh, in case of pyogenic meningitis, there is uh, the color is turbid or frankly parolent. It may show deposit or clot. In aseptic meningitis, the fluid is clear and normal in appearance. Whereas in tuberculous meningitis, if the fluid is allowed to stand undisturbed, it may produce a cobweb. Now, cytological examination, we will make a smear of the CSF and stain it with hematoxylin and eosin. Normal CSF contains only 0 to 3 lymphocytes per mn cube. Whereas in case of pyogenic meningitis, the cell count is markedly increased, maybe 500 to 1000 or more per mn cube, and almost all cells are neutrophils in case of pyogenic meningitis. Whereas in case of tuberculous meningitis, the cells are slightly increased and lymphocytes are present in large number, but there may be neutrophils as well. And in case of aseptic meningitis, there is slight increase in lymphocytes. Aseptic meningitis is due to, uh, mostly due to viral infections. This is cytological examination, then biochemical examination. In biochemical examination, you will do two tests, that is protein and sugar. So, protein content of uh, normal CSF is 15 to 40 milligram per cent. In pyogenic meningitis, the proteins are markedly increased. The value is 200 to 700 milligram or more. Whereas in case of tuberculous meningitis, the rise in protein value is moderate. And in case of aseptic meningitis, the proteins are slightly elevated. So most marked increase in case of pyogenic meningitis, then 
moderate increase in acute aseptic meningitis whereas uh, in tuberculous meningitis there is moderate increase and in case of aseptic meningitis the proteins are slightly elevated then sugar content of the cerebrospinal fluid normally it is 50 to 70 mg per cent in case of pyogenic meningitis the value is markedly decreased or there may be no sugar in the CSF and the value may be reduced in tuberculous meningitis but in aseptic meningitis sugar content is almost normal then bacteriological examination we see the type of bacteria and we do two type of tests we make smear and we also do culture of the csf or blood so under aseptic precautions about 2 ml of cerebrospinal fluid is centrifuged at about 3000 revolutions per minute for 5 minutes supernatant is used for chemical examination that is for proteins and sugar and the deposit is used for smear examination and culture so smear made is then stained with gram stain and zn stain to see gram positive or negative bacteria and acid fast bacteria that is mycobacterium tuberculosis and the culture of blood and cerebrospinal fluid both are done culture can be done on blood or chocolate agar also and it will show the type of bacteria okay thank you